The Winter 2013 WealthDoc 7 enhancements include primarily asset protection improvements to existing documents and the addition of several new asset protection trusts to our suite of estate planning documents. Our continuing goal for our biannual series of WealthDocs enhancements is to pursue excellence and to provide our members with the community and tools that they need to practice excellence. Unfortunately, our friend and colleague, Tom Ray, who serves as Wealth Council's executive editor and the director of legal support, could not join me for this introduction to our Winter 2013 enhancements. So I will read both the member questions and our responses in light of these enhancements. Did Wealth Council make any changes to its flagship document, the Revocable Living Trust? The RLT received an enhancement to its asset protection provisions in response to requests from our members. A recent case in Florida highlighted the interaction between the state's probate code and its RLT statutes. In essence, the trustee of the RLT received life insurance death benefits. Florida, like most states, has a probate code statute that allows creditors to pursue the assets of the RLT if the probate estate has insufficient assets and income to satisfy legitimate claims and expenses. The court held that even though the death benefits of a life insurance policy are generally exempt from creditors' claims, including claims against a decedent's estate, the proceeds in this case held by the trustee of the RLT were available to satisfy the probate estate's claims based on this payover provision. In response, we inserted an administrative provision that prohibits the trustee of the RLT from using life insurance death benefits to satisfy expenses of or claims against the probate estate. This change should address this type of situation. Unfortunately, there is no case dealing with the safeguard provisions like this in this context. However, to approach this situation prudently, it is probably best to avoid routing life insurance policy proceeds through the RLT. For example, you could instead designate an irrevocable life insurance trust, which we all affectionately know as an islet, or another irrevocable trust to receive those death benefits. This case is yet another example of how important asset protection planning is, often as or more important than tax considerations. We only know of this recent Florida case, but we wanted to take a proactive approach for our members in other states who might confront these same circumstances. Our friend Tom Ray has quoted the Boy Scouts of America for quite some time. Their motto, be prepared, is surely fitting here. Did Wealth Council make enhancements to any of the existing irrevocable documents? Yes, we have added several versions of our Domestic Asset Protection Trust, or DAPT. We began with Delaware, one of the primary states to offer this type of trust. However, our members have requested that we accommodate the use of other states with equally, or in the view of some, superior DAPT statutes. We know that asset protection is one of the greatest concerns of our members and the clients and families whom they serve. In fact, outside of trust and estates and probate law, asset protection ranks among the top three practice areas behind business succession and exit planning and elder law of the 1,600 plus respondents of our sixth annual Industry Trends Survey. To better equip our members to address this practice area, we agreed with numerous members that we should add more versions of our DAPT. We selected the top three states, aside from Delaware, that have enacted DAPT statutes. Alaska was the first state to enact a DAPT statute. In fact, Steve Greer, Esquire, who served as one of the primary drafters of Alaska's statute, is now serving on our Asset Protection Advisory Committee and assisted us with the addition of an Alaskan DAPT. 
Alaska also ranks highly among commentators as one of the leading DAPT jurisdictions. For example, Steve Ocean's Esquire ranks Alaska's DAPT statute as one of the top three jurisdictions behind his native state of Nevada and South Dakota. Speaking of Mr. Oceans and Nevada, we added Nevada as the second additional DAPT of Wealth Docs. Mr. Oceans served as a primary drafter of Nevada's DAPT statute. He assisted with our enhancement process along with several of our Nevada State Forum members and other trust companies in Nevada. The third addition to our DAPT selections was South Dakota, although it might be the primary choice of some of our members. Mr. Oceans ranked South Dakota second in his third annual Domestic Asset Protection Trust state rankings chart. Indeed, he awarded a total score of 92 to South Dakota behind his perfect score to Nevada and in front of his score of 90 to Alaska. We agree that these four states of Alaska, Delaware, Nevada, and South Dakota serve as leading DAPT jurisdictions. WealthDoc 7 is now the only drafting system available with specifically designed DAPTs to address the differences among these leading jurisdictions, which we will further highlight in our frequently asked questions and our upcoming educational programs on this enhancement. We will consider the addition of other state options if members desire, particularly given the fact that there are now more than a dozen states with DAPT statutes in place, with Virginia being the most recent, I believe. Please share any feedback you have along these lines. Did Wealth Council enhance any of the business planning documents? Yes, we have incorporated several enhancements to our business planning documents as a result of the input from our Asset Protection Advisory Committee. The enhancements focus on the Limited Liability Company Operating Agreement. These changes include allowing the manager to require additional capital contributions, including from creditors, defining a manager's bankruptcy as an act of withdrawal, and defining an action to dissolve the LLC as a breach of the operating agreement. Based on our member feedback and the views of leading commentators, including Wealth Council friend and Business Stocks Advisory member John Cunningham, Esquire, most folks choose LLCs because, among other advantageous factors, they offer one of the strongest statutory regimes to deal with asset protection concerns of business owners and families. We had already included various asset protection planning provisions in the WealthDoc 7 LLC operating agreement. Our Asset Protection Advisory Committee helped us to expand those provisions to discourage spurious litigation. We trust that you will share our excitement in rolling out these asset protection enhancements to WealthDoc 7. We want to thank our members and especially those who serve on the Asset Protection Advisory Committee and our Nevada State Forum members for their help in bringing about these important and powerful changes. I would like to thank our Wealth Council team, including especially our content and development teams, for their contributions to this Winter 2013 Enhancement. We look forward to serving you in this new year, which finally introduced permanent federal transfer tax legislation again to our Internal Revenue Code. Those changes will definitely inform our next enhancement. Stay tuned.